Maka's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maka here, playing Man of Madon, and in this video, I'll be showing you all 50 of the available secrets in the game. I do have a separate video for frames, but you can very easily manage both of these collectible types at the same time. Now, the game will require you to do multiple playthroughs or partial playthroughs in order to grab all 50. None of them are that spectacularly hidden, but a couple of them are in tricky situations. Additionally, there are seven collectibles only available in Curator's Cut Mode or Co-op Shared Story, so make sure you do those in the correct mode. I'll point them out on screen when we get there. Doing all 50 of the secrets will unlock an achievement or trophy, as well as some hidden special features in the menu of the game. So let's get started with the first collectible you can grab during the chapter Uninvited Guests, when Julia and Alex go down and dive into the plane. As Julia, you can interact with the tube above the doorway to start a little bit of a dialogue. You'll then have a section where you have to choose the live a little option, and that'll make you go inside of the tube and grab this note. Then on the way out, you'll be able to inspect it. I'm going to fast forward so you guys don't have to watch this entire section. There is a QTE you will need to do in order to grab the note. And once you are outside, you will need to inspect the note by rotating it and making sure you read both sides. You'll know that it counted if it says secret found in the top left corner of the screen. And feel free to look in the secrets menu at any time to make sure you are counting along. You'll also notice in the bottom left hand corner that each collectible has a unique number tied to it. That is the number in the collectibles menu. Now, if we go a little bit deeper into the plane on the right hand side, we can find number 49, anti-aircraft shell. Also, at the very beginning of this plane, there was a very obvious picture frame sitting in the bottom left corner. You probably didn't miss it, but thought I'd let you know anyways. And then just after you get the anti-aircraft shell, move forward and keep to your left in order to find number 40, the missing lifeboat. Check it out. They reconfigured the bomb rack to hold lifeboats. Interesting. One of the rescue boats is missing. Think they were using it? Let's see what else we can... The next collectible is number 20, and that is the co-pilot badge. This one is only available in the curator's cut mode or the co-op shared story, and you'll be playing as Brad on the ship near dusk. Once you gain control of him, walk to the right and pick up the photo camera and then scroll through all of the photos until you reach the last one, which is the co-pilot badge. Julia, are you happy? Oh crap, this badge. Conwin Island. I was totally right. Eventually, you will reach the chapter Abandoned Ship where everyone is captured and brought on board the Orang Medan. Now, you'll be playing as either Conrad or Alex, depending on what happened in your previous decisions. But you should be walking through the hallways and then notice someone shuffling through some lockers on your left-hand side. The camera will pan, a rat will run across the screen, and just as you enter the next corner, on the right-hand side of the screen, you should notice a collectible. This one's number 26, Guard Duty Note. Next up is the chapter Trapped. This is just after you guys are locked inside of the room. Again, you might be playing as a variety of people, but this chapter is not missable. As soon as you gain control of a character, you'll want to pick up two collectibles in the room before finding your exit. The first one is right in front of you on the table near the middle. You can inspect that in order to get the 1947 newspaper. And there's additionally like a little picture on the wall. It's not a frame, but you can inspect it just for fun if you so desire. The other collectible is on the left of the screen, kind of near Julia. It's a note, and this one is Private Miller's letter. Great. While the place is... 
The next chapter is called An Escape. You'll take control of, again, either Conrad or Alex, depending on some of your other decisions. As soon as you gain control after escaping from the locked room, the first room on your left, if you enter it and inspect the clipboard, you'll get the guard duty roster collectible, which is number 14. Now we'll kind of continue in one clip here. We're gonna now walk down the hallway in order to find the area where Julia is kind of standing next to a door and waiting for us. Watch out on the right hand side of the screen. There's a little spooky here. Nonetheless, as we reach Julia, don't continue forward. Instead, turn to the left. And there is a washroom here with a very cleverly hidden collectible. So we'll go inside and then you may not think you can go here, but if you go to the right hand side of the screen, it'll actually open up the rest of the washroom for you. And you can find number 45, Private Reed's letter, uh, inside of the final stall here. What we'll do next is basically continue in the direction of where this chapter is taking us, which is just past the door where Julia was standing outside of the washroom. This will take us to a catwalk of sorts in what I believe is some sort of engine room. At the very end of this walkway, instead of turning to the right, turn to the left. And there you will notice what I believe is a small wooden desk with a book on top of it. Inspect the book, move it around, and as you try to put it down, you should be able to open it. And whenever you do get a book collectible, make sure you swipe to the second page. And make sure you get that notification in the top left of your screen saying that you have found a secret. This one is number seven, the engineer's logbook. Next up, what we'll want to do is continue in the direction that the game wants us to go. So at the end of the catwalk, go through the door and take the sharp turn into the next room. There is a picture frame in this room if you would like to grab it. It's in the far right-hand corner from where we entered. However, for the purpose of this video, we're going to find number 11, Journal Secret, which is just ahead of us and to the left. It's a book sitting on a table next to a helmet here. Next up, we are in the chapter Caskets. This is another unmissable area of the game. Uh, and you'll be playing and walking through the kitchen. As you come through the kitchen, make sure you kind of go on the far left side of the screen. And you can interact with a menu board, the catering staff schedule on the wall there. You do have to actually like read it out to yourself in order for it to trigger. So it might take a couple of seconds before you can back out, but it should have been added to your secrets. Next up, what we can do is go to the next room where we can find uh, the first secret in the game, which is the diary. So as you enter this next kind of huge open area, just head to the right hand side, staying close to the screen and find the diary sitting on what I believe is some sort of like bench slash bed. It's a picnic table of sorts, I guess. You will then reach a room with a bunch of caskets. That's what the chapter is named after nonetheless. And there are four of them. And each one has its own unique uh, secret kind of tied to it. So we have number 24, which is the close left one. And that one is called the open casket. Then the close right one is number 22. That is the casket nameplate. The far right one is 35 small casket, and the far left one is number 13 locked casket. Make sure you grab all four of these while you're in this room, and then we can move on to the next area. Where they're from or where they're going, they're dead and we're not, so let's keep it that way.
Look at this one. Like for a kid or something. I don't want to know. Let's get out of here. Yes! Maybe that's little baby Dracula. Right there. And those are his parents, and they're lying in the dirt from their native country. And then they all jump on Conrad and eat off his face. <laughs> the end. Got some serious locks in these caskets. Why would they be chained and locked? Well, that's one way to end a relationship. A couple of rooms after the casket room, you will reach an area where they talk about how spick and span it is. It seems like some sort of medical bay with a couple of bunk beds and a checkerboard floor. You'll walk by this corpse and it'll kind of spook you. And Julia should try to guide you through the right hand side door at the exit. However, we're going to go through the other door, which is the left door. And there are two collectibles in this room. Now, you may notice that you can interact with the body in the middle of the room, and I do that on screen. However, that doesn't count as one of the secrets. I just ended up kind of doing it just to be sure. But in the back left corner, there is a terrified body on the ground, and we'll want to make sure that we interact with that in order to get secret number 18. Additionally, right after that, we can stand up and go to the surgery tray, on the left hand side in the middle of the room and that will allow us to grab collectible number 39 the electrocardiogram results okay so this guy had appendicitis which is pretty routine we will then do the chapter named danny where danny the pirate escorts fliss kind of through a couple of hallways and he'll kind of slowly start losing his mind a little bit the first thing he'll notice is a hat on the ground, and he'll think it's a person. He'll knock the hat over, and then you'll regain control of Fliss here, and you'll be able to inspect the hat. This is actually a pretty important collectible because it'll allow you to uh, know the name of the ship later on in the game. And knowing the name of the ship actually grabs you an achievement or trophy. I'll talk about the other collectible you'll need and then what you can do once you have both of them a little bit later on in the video. As long as you're following along, you, have, you can't really miss it. A little bit later on in that same chapter, Danny, you will see a body on the ground on the right-hand side. Danny will mention it as well, and it'll you'll kind of inspect it as part of the game. But then you have to inspect it a second time in order for it to reveal the secret, which is uh, number 16 in the menu. So make sure you just inspect it until you 100% have it added to your menu. Huh. Where did all your friends go? I don't know what the fuck this is all about, but we gotta keep moving and find Olsen. Now! A little bit later on in the chapter, Danny, you'll reach what looks to be some sort of garage with a bunch of vehicles, and you can allow Fliss to drop down from a small ledge. This one's very hard to miss because it's basically directly in front of you uh, as you walk forward before going through to the next room. Make sure you interact with the soldier in order to grab his dog tag. Jesus, what happened down here? Next up, we are on the chapter Finding Friends, which is the first missable chapter in this guide, indicated by the asterisk next to the chapter name. In order to play this chapter, Brad has to remain undetected during the intrusion. During this chapter, as Brad, you will sneak onto the boat in order to try to find out what happened to your friends. There are a couple of collectibles to grab along the way. Near the very beginning, you'll climb up some stairs and go through a doorway into a long hall. What you'll want to do is go to the end of the hall and then enter the room on the right in order to find collectible number 21, the hastily written message sitting on the desk in this room. What we'll then do is exit back out of this room and head towards kind of where we came from and go through the first door on the right. You'll notice that you'll get spooked kind of as you enter, but you can also find infantry badge collectible number 43 in this room on the left hand side. You can additionally find a frame in this room, so make sure you inspect it while you're here.
You will then reach a row of lockers, and at the end of this row, you can walk through the door. There's a box at the end of the hall that you can push to get through a small hole in the wall. But before we do that, what we want to do is actually go through the door and end up kind of in the back office. In these offices at the far end from where we entered, we can find the collectible number four called Locke's Memo. Last but not least, for finding friends, we will go through a door and then end up in a kind of large rectangular area where we'll have to drop down. Before dropping down, make sure you find the radio operator's memo by interacting with one of the bodies kind of on the left side of the screen. Skeletons. Skeletons. Skeletons? Where's the skin, guys? Where'd all the skin go? Some sort of altercation. Next up, we are on the chapter Ritual, playing as Fliss. You'll enter a opulent ballroom and then make your way to the back room in order to find a framed picture. Next to that picture is a lever that will open up the backstage, and if you go through the door in the backstage, you will grab some fresh air. Upon re-entering the room, you'll notice that things have kind of changed, and there are three collectibles in this new ballroom area. The first one will be directly in front of you and is number 38, the chemical leak, and you'll want to inspect what used to be the casket here to find uh, this secret. Now, before we inspect the crack in the wall and try to figure out how to get out of here, we do want to make our way back into the room. Keep in mind that there is a 10-minute limit in this room, and if you stick around and just kind of stand a little bit too long, the uh, chapter will kind of automatically conclude and you'll be taken out of it. You can always chapter select back to it once you finish the game, but we might as well just grab them while we're here. Make your way back into the ballroom, and on the left, you'll notice that there are some broken wires sparking near some water or near a hole, and you'll want to interact with those in order to get number 37 broken wires. And then from this secret, on the opposite side of the room, sitting on a barrel, we can find a book, number 47. This is the cargo ship manual. Make sure you look through the pages in order to get it to unlock. The next chapter you play depends on your previous actions. You'll either get a chapter called Pressure or Glamour Girl. In order to play Pressure, Fliss and Brad must recognize each other, and for this to happen, Fliss must get fresh air in her chapter ritual, and Brad must grab the gas mask from the locker in his chapter Finding Friends. If both these conditions are true, they'll bump into each other and not be scared, and then they'll join forces to continue on to the chapter Pressure. As it starts, you'll make your way through some hallways, a pipe will burst, and then there is a place to climb out. Before climbing out, make sure you go to the end of this hallway in order to grab the Ghost Rumors Report collectible. Now, if you didn't get the chapter Pressure, you probably got the chapter Glamour Girl, which happens if Conrad is alive and with the group, and Fliss and Brad do not recognize each other. For this to happen, Fliss either does not get fresh air in her chapter ritual, or Brad does not grab the gas mask. In this chapter, you'll control Conrad, and you'll want to enter the first room on your left in order to look at the map and get collectible number five, Water Purification Map. 
Additionally, if you want to grab a frame, you can find one in the room that is connected to this room just beside the doorway. So make sure you grab that if you haven't already. Another collectible can be found in this area and to do it, you'll want to go and head back into the hallway and then enter the second door on your right here, right across the hall. And as you enter it, just in front of you, there should be the man overboard search orders, which is a small document on the table. Next off, you can also get three more collectibles in Glamour Girl in the Curator's Cut or Co-op Shared Story version of this chapter where you play as Fliss. In order for this to happen, Conrad must be alive and Fliss and Brad must also be alive. If you are playing an online co-op, only one of you will play as Fliss, but grabbing the collectibles will unlock them for both players. As you enter the hallway, look to the left hand side in order to grab number 15, Cargo Bill of Landing. There is additionally a frame in this area, but you will need Brad to be with you. In order for Brad to be with you, you will have to recognize each other and then survive the chapter pressure together, and you'll end up in this area together, allowing you to open the door to the left. However, when going for secrets, enter the second door on your right in order to find Collectible 31, the Violent Incident Report. More info on the frame in this area can be found in my frame-specific video. I'll leave a link in the description. Last but not least, you can also find a collectible in the safe in the final room on the left hand side. Go through the door from the hallway and then go into the second room, but make sure you stick to the left hand side as going too close to the exit door will cause a cutscene to start and automatically end this area. Additionally, if you're playing this in Curator's Cut or Shared Story Mode, there is a possibility of just finishing this off and then chapter selecting your way back here in order to get the frame. All of the details for the frame will be listed inside of the frame video. It's very complicated, but is quite easy if you have the scene select ready to go for yourself. So keep that in mind. But nonetheless, for this secret, you'll go to the back room, interact with the small table, grab the key, come back into the room and use the key on the safe in order to open it up and find the secret. Huh. So the Manchurian gold is just a bunch of unstable chemicals. We now snap back to a mandatory chapter. This one's called Distress Signal. You may be in control of a different character than the one on screen though. But as you are on the top deck of the boat, walk forward and inspect the shell casing on the crate to your left in order to find number 50 anti-aircraft shell casing. Next up, we can find the gas mask instructions by walking all the way to the end of the deck and taking two right-hand turns. At the end of the deck here, there is a small container, which we can open up to inspect. In there, we'll find a person with a gas mask, and we'll also find the collectible on how to use that gas mask, although you can't actually like pick it up and use it later on in the game. It is a secret you'll want to grab. Find a way up? Sadly, no, but I'll keep my eyes open. Hold down. Huh. Must have been moving some pretty dangerous cargo. A little bit later on in the chapter distress signal, you will end up inside of what seems to be the control room. In here, there is collectible number 42, which is the ship's logbook. This one is also very important for us to grab if you want to know what the name of the boat is, which is an achievement or trophy we can grab. You would have also needed to grab collectible number 41, which is the Madon hat. So make sure you grab this one. Additionally, there is a frame in this room. We will walk right next to it in this upcoming clip. So after we uh, go through both pages of the book and make sure the secret is added to our menu, we can then put the book down and continue 
into the next hallway. You'll notice the frame kind of directly behind me right as I walk past it in this next hallway. It's very hard to miss. So there's a door and then there's the frame kind of on the wall right behind me. I'm going to ignore it for the purposes of this video, but grab it while you're here if you don't already have it. And then what we can do is find the nautical chart, which is this large map on the wall over here as we enter into the next area. This one has a little bit of a backstory and a little bit of a conversation before we are able to leave. And the secret should show up in the bottom in the top left hand corner of the screen there before we back off. Out in the ocean. Now, once we back off inside of this same kind of hallway, you'll see a desk. And with that desk, there is a note. This is the navigator's notebook. And we will want to obviously inspect that. We are now with at 40 out of 50. Obviously, if you're on your first playthrough, you are not able to do every single chapter as some of them contradict each other. But you should have a decent amount of collectibles by now. Last but not least, enter the radio room and watch out. This one is very easily missed. Make sure you stick near the door and go to the desk on the right hand side. If you go too close to the radio, it will trigger the end of this chapter. So make sure you pick up the radio operator's final message collectible before moving closer to the radio and deciding who goes down the hole. Now, regardless of who you send down, this will begin the chapter called Depths. You might take control of Alex or you might take control of Brad, and this will have an effect later on in the game. However, regardless of who's down here, there are some collectibles to grab in this mandatory chapter. Once we drop down, we'll make our way through a couple of doorways and then into a side room, and we'll be able to grab the uh, minutes of meeting document in the safe. This is actually a safe we were able to inspect in the prologue of the game, but it was locked, so I thought that was a little cool callback for those of you who might have noticed that safe at the very beginning of the game. Now, as we continue a little bit further, either as Brad or Alex, we'll want to go past this area and we'll notice that there is a room called the Sick Bay. And inside of the sick bay, there is something we can grab. So we can see it here on the left-hand side of the screen as we approach. Make sure you go inside, and in this room on the countertop, there is a note we want to grab. You can also inspect the body if you want. This is not a collectible, but I accidentally did it, and I just kind of kept it in as a clip. So make sure you grab that collectible, which is Private Patterson's medical record. Now, eventually, you'll drop down and end up in the engine room at the lowest point of the ship. And what we can do here is walk forward, and we're looking for the generator. But before doing that, there's a couple things we want to grab. Now, what you'll want to do is you'll come to a, a dead end, and we'll want to walk away from the screen in order to find the engine room telegraph log, which is a book sitting on a desk of sorts. Now, before interacting with the generator, there is also a framed picture we can grab. Near the generator, go to the right-hand side. There's a little bit of a secret path, and here you can find the framed photo. Additionally, you can also grab the rebreather, which is on the left side of the generator, but you'll want to activate the generator after grabbing the framed photo. And then we can continue on a little bit deeper into the depths chapter where we will spy on the main pirate named Olsen. If we are able to successfully pull off the keep calm QTE, we'll end up in the room where Danny just died. Now, be quick here as you only have about 15 to 20 seconds before you are automatically forced out of this room. What we want to do is walk forward next to Danny and look on the table to the right hand side, picking up the military orders. next chapter in the game is going to be split based on who you sent down the hole in the chapter distress signal. If you sent down Alex and Julia, you will eventually take control of Brad in the chapter named Olsen. This chapter has a collectible frame that you'll see as we walk by it right here just around the corner. But additionally, we can find the casket shortage memo as collectible number 36 in the same room as the golden frame at the end of the room in some lockers. This is the frame directly in front of us. We can grab it if we want it. Um, for the purposes of this video, I didn't, but we can also find that collectible in the lockers here.
Now, if you sent down Brad and Julia in the chapter Distress Signal to turn on the generator, you will eventually take control of Alex in the chapter Matters of the Heart. Playing as Alex allows us to grab one collectible. As you go through the hallways, you'll end up kind of walking by a couple of doors and through a couple of hallways, and eventually you'll end up in what looks to be some sort of kitchen area. And on the left-hand side, next to the stoves, you can find the top secret intelligence note. This was my final collectible personally, which is why you see the achievement unlocking. We are now playing in the Curator's Cut or Shared Story co-op version of Matters of the Heart. For this chapter to happen, Brad and Julia went to find the generator in the chapter Distress Signal. Additionally, you'll be playing as Fliss, or if you're in co-op, only one of you will be playing as Fliss, but as long as this person picks up the collectibles, both players should get them. You'll end up in a section where you end up on the kind of walkway outside of a room as Fliss, You'll walk to the next room, and then in this next room, there are three collectibles. As you enter to your left, find the Diplomatic Immunity Report. Then you can find number 12, the ID badges and documentation in the safe. And additionally, you can find one more collectible on the desk to the right before exiting off of this area. Again, this is in the chapter Matters of the Heart, and only possible if you're playing as Fliss. In co-op, one of the people will be playing as Fliss. And hopefully that is all 50 out of 50 for you. If you are missing any, feel free to use the time links in the YouTube description, which should be updated shortly after this video is uploaded. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. And a special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Shout out to Double O, and hopefully I see you guys soon. Peace.